It is Monday morning. I have a large family and I don't really know what is going to be on the menu this week, but I know that these people expect to eat. So let's jump into it. Now, normally during any week, I like to keep meat thawed out in the refrigerator. I like to keep the sourdough starter bubbling out on the countertop ready for use. Like I mentioned though, it is Monday morning. So I don't have any of those things at this present time. But I have been at this motherhood gig for 15 years now and homemaking for 16 years now. So I do have a few tricks up my sleeve for how I can still get food on the table, even though we've come off of a weekend where we were very busy and I let the kitchen kind of go. So whenever I'm active in my kitchen, I'm making every meal from scratch. I'm in this flow and this momentum. I can get food on the table from scratch food very easily because I have all the things I need stocked. I have the meat thawed. I have the starter active and ready. It makes for a very streamlined process, but whenever that grinds to a halt, whether that be for a vacation or having a new baby or something as regular and ordinary as a weekend, I am just going to show you how I get back on track. This, this does happen to me just about every single weekend, and so it's okay. One of my favorite tasks on a Monday is figuring out what is in the refrigerator that needs to be used up before we start fresh with either new groceries or new meat or new bread. So first I'm gonna get some bread going and then I'm gonna go into the refrigerator and talk a bit about that. I am doing a half whole grain, so I just milled some flour, half that and half all-purpose flour. I'm gonna make these little mini bread rolls. So it's kind of like rolls, kind of like bread, but I'm basically just doing my regular no need artisan loaf, which is 950 grams of flour. I'm doing that in half, so I'm doing 475, and I'm doing each half of that whole grain and all purpose, and then 325 grams of water, that's just half the water that I normally put in it, and 10 grams of salt and 100 grams of sourdough starter. Now, as you can see, the sourdough starter is not active and bubbly. I just pulled it right out of the refrigerator. That is okay. As long as I put this in a warm spot, everything will still rise and ferment. I have been using non-active sourdough starter for so many years. It wasn't until like probably four or five years ago that I realized that it was supposed to technically be bubbly before making something else. And you still can get really good results. So I'm a constant sourdough rule breaker. I'm also getting lots of meat out of, out of the freezer, as you can see, and putting it in the fridge to slowly thaw so I can use it throughout the week. Now, some fast thawing things that I can get going today is ground beef, ground sausage, and bacon. Now, for today, I'm just doing ground sausage and bacon, but ground beef is another thing that I like to fast thaw in hot water. I know a lot of people get really anxious about the thawing in hot water, I can tell you that if you do it fast, so it's not like you're letting it sit in hot water all day long, but you're just doing it as much until it's workable, like not even all the way thawed, cook it right away. I've never had a problem. I also noticed that I have some odds and end bread in the refrigerator. I'm going to do a couple things with this and not that this bread isn't good. It's totally fine. It's from last week, but it's not super fresh and I'd like to just start with fresh bread and use this for other applications. I have a loaf of my sourdough Italian bread that's over on the Farmhouse on Boom blog and then something else. I think it was my small batch sourdough. Anyways, I'm not sure. It was in the fridge and I'm gonna make it into first basically like croutons. I'm gonna toast them on a sheet and then I'm gonna use half of them to make a quick and easy strata for our meal today and then half of them I will blend up to make into breadcrumbs, which we use all the time here in our kitchen. So that's fridge clean out priority number one. Now, while that is toasting in the oven, I do wanna tell you a little bit about how I treat whole grain breads. There's been a lot more questions lately on whole grain doughs. One thing you'll notice is that when this dough first came together, whenever I was whisking it with the dough hook, it looked very watery and that's because it takes longer for whole grain flours to soak up all the water. So I let my dough sit for a good hour to do that auto auto lease process or auto lice process where it soaks up the water. And then I performed my first stretch and fold, but that was very later. Normally I'll only let it sit for maybe like 30 minutes before I start stretching and folding. 
With whole grain, it needs a little bit more time to soak that all up. And you'll notice on that first stretch and fold, it's very shaggy. It isn't developed. It's not like a smooth, glossy dough. But as I do more stretch and folds throughout this day, it will get to that point, even though it's whole grain. And I need to turn my mill down. I actually have since turned it down so that way it'll make a finer flour. But this is a very gritty flour. So it it is also difficult for it to be glossy and smooth, but it does still come together. So just have patience. And I will be sharing more about using the different settings. So I'm going to show you what it's like when I use a finer flour, but for a more coarse one, this ends up smooth and glossy after several stretch and folds. Now onto this strata. I do have this recipe over on the blog. So if you want printable directions, you can go to farmhouseonboon.com, search strata, S-T-R-A-T-A, and basically I'm just using some sourdough bread. You can use any kind. It all will work just great. And I'm going to combine that with 10 eggs. Well, I'm going to toast that, set it aside, and then combine 10 eggs, three cups of milk, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and then brown up sausage and some onion in a cast iron skillet. I also did get in the oven. I love to cook bacon in the oven. So I got some bacon in the oven. I'm going to make this a sausage and bacon strata just because we have that meat. In order to saute the onions a bit more, this sausage, it's kind of low fat because it came from a pastured hog. I'm adding in some of the bacon fat just to give it a bit more fat and then returning that back to the oven to allow the bacon to get a little bit more brown. You can see this sourdough bread here with the half gritty, gritty, coarse whole grain is starting to get smooth and glossy with more stretch and folds. So that is really coming together. I plan to serve this with dinner tonight. So it's going to be same day sourdough, even though the starter came directly from the fridge, kind of dormant, but it was fed in the last week, just in the fridge. And yeah, this is how I can get meals on the table really fast, even though it's Monday. Same thing here. I'm getting a whole frozen chicken in the instant pot. That's another fast way to prepare something that's fully frozen. I don't love cooking chicken in the Instant Pot just because I don't feel like it has the best flavor for like a whole chicken with roasted potatoes or something. But for something that you're just going to put the chicken into it, like a soup or a casserole, I'm fine with putting it in the Instant Pot and you can't argue with the amount of time that it takes versus the oven on a Monday morning. Now to finish off this strata, I'm going to whisk the eggs, milk, salt, and pepper together and then add in my toasted bread cubes, some cheese and the sausage and the egg and the onion all together, bake it in the oven until it's nice and crispy. I will top it with bacon when it's all said and done. This is a crowd pleaser and if there's some leftover, I will just cover it with either foil or plastic wrap, stick it right in the refrigerator in the skillet and then I can take that back off, like if you did plastic wrap back off the top put it in the oven to warm it back up and then serve it for breakfast or something. Um, it's good breakfast or lunch. We love a breakfast for dinner because it's easy and usually we have all the ingredients thawed out, ready to go. Doesn't require a whole lot of pre-planning. Taking a quick break from my cooking to tell you about today's video sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is a membership-based online grocery store that specializes in natural and organic items. For me personally, I love using Thrive Market because items that I find difficult to find locally come right to my door. It's very convenient. Things like einkorn flour, spices, condiments, even snacks. We do a homeschool co-op and we also do play dates, especially now that it's getting a little bit warmer here where we are. I like to have chips fried in avocado oil or sometimes even little snack bars. The kids really love that. Pasta, oats, rice, various grains I can find on Thrive Market. I love that on the website you can sort by dietary preference. So if you are dairy free, gluten free, paleo, you can make it to where only those things show up. So it makes for a streamlined shopping experience. Thrive Market also does a price match. So if there's something that you really love on Thrive Market but it's a better price somewhere else, you can get it for that lower price there. 
With Thrive Market, you have the option to pay month to month at $12 a month. So if you wanna get on there, see if there's anything that maybe you can't find where you live or something that's a much better price there, you have the option to check it out for a couple of months. The other option which will save you money overall is to be billed annually at $59.95. That's always the option that I've chosen. I've been a happy customer with Thrive Market for many, many years, long before they even sponsored this channel. Orders over $49 ship free. There's no tipping, no additional fees. It makes it really convenient. You can join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your order plus a free gift worth up to $60 by using my link, thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on Boone. Now is the time to sign up because in addition to my 30% off discount, Thrive is running a huge sale this week on hundreds of products through their stock up sale. Again, thank you so much to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. I cooked the frozen chicken in the Instant Pot for about an hour and a half. Whenever the chicken is fully thawed, you can get away with an hour. This is also a relatively small chicken. I got it from my sister's farm, so it's pasture raised and all that good stuff. I'm gonna set it aside so it can cool because I have to handle it to get all of the chicken off to make what I'm gonna make for dinner. Now I'm going to work a bit here with my dough. So I did a half recipe of my no need loaf, but I did it with half whole grain. So I half the original recipe and then even made half of that whole grain. So hopefully that makes sense. But I'm basically making these little tiny mini loaves. So I'm shaping them just like you would a sourdough loaf. What, how many did I do all together? I don't even know. I didn't really measure, but I just wanted to make them roll size, but little. So that way you could cut them in half, toast them and butter them, and they'd be really tasty that way. So just like with regular sourdough, I'm gonna let it do its second rise, but in this case at room temperature, because I want to serve these for dinner, I want to have same day, all in the same day sourdough, instead of doing you know the several days where you feed the starter the one day, do the stretch and folds and the bulk from it the first or the second day, or however you slice that, and then do a 12 to 24 hour fridge rise. I'm just condensing everything and putting it in a really warm spot so that I can make it really fast. So this spot here in the middle of my stove is my super warm spot because there are pilot lights. Sometimes if I'm really in a hurry, I will bake other things in the oven so that way the top of it of the oven, the stove top is even warmer. So if I have the oven on, the stove top is even warmer and I can get this to go really, really fast. So that's what I'm gonna do here today so that I can serve my soup I'm making with sourdough bread. Now, I talk about this all the time, but soup, is so basic in the winter. I just do the same things over and over again, maybe slight variations so people in my family don't realize we're eating the same thing over again. This is no exception. So I, I'm getting some lard here that I've reserved from cooking bacon and the same old trio of veggies that I do all the time, onions, garlic, and carrots, sauteing that as a base for the rest of the soup. Now the bread has been rising here for about an hour or two. So I am scoring it and I'm putting it on a preheated stone, trying to mimic regular sourdough bread that's made in a cast iron Dutch oven. Now what a cast iron Dutch oven does is it, if you preheat it, it creates this really hot environment because the cast iron holds the heat. Then it also traps steam inside. So to recreate that same type of environment without putting little tiny mini loaves in a Dutch oven, I am just putting it on a preheated pizza stone and then putting a cast iron skillet that's boiling with water into the oven to give it that steam. I'm adding a bit of flour to my bacon fat and vegetables to create sort of a roux. And then instead of broth today, because I don't have any broth made up already, any bone broth, I am just straining off all of the drippings from the chicken cooking. So I added some water to the Instant Pot when cooking my chicken. And then the juices and the water create sort of a broth that I'm just gonna strain off into my soup. I will also add some cream to give this a bit more liquid. So this is coming together and I didn't really have a plan, but as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, this is literally just chicken pot pie. It's the filling for chicken pot pie, but I am making it a bit more liquidy. So adding a bit more broth, a bit more milk. And so I'm going with it. I had a can of tomatoes out because I was like, I'm gonna add tomatoes to the soup. Tomatoes are always good in soup. But then as I was seeing the creamy carrots, onions and garlic and chicken, I was thinking, wait a minute, I'm making, let's just call this chicken pot pie soup. So basically I'm making chicken pot pie filling 
and then serving it with little bread rolls instead of the biscuits or the pie crust that you normally put on chicken pot pie. So again, same old thing, just maybe with a slight variation so people don't get bored, but I fall back to the same veggies, the same proteins, I mean, with with some variation um, over and over again, just to keep simplicity in my kitchen and keep people eating without me having to reinvent the wheel every single time. I also did add some fresh herbs, some fresh thyme on that soup made it really delicious. Now, tonight I'm going to do a pork shoulder roast. We have a lot of these because I ordered a whole hog from my sister's farm. We just, pork shoulder roast, I love it. It's good as tacos or carnitas. It's good braised. It's good in the instant pot, cooked really fast. No matter what, I love it. So I have a little bit of lard. I'm going to cook this on all four sides to really sear in and lock in those juices. So I'm looking for color on all the sides of this shoulder roast. Today I am doing this in my oven, so I'm searing it on the stovetop in the Dutch oven, and then I'm gonna be baking it in the oven. But whenever I do this in the Instant Pot, I just set the Instant Pot to the saute function in order to sear it on all four sides, and then I add some liquid, bring it to pressure, and cook it for about an hour, hour and a half. Now I'm just setting it aside and cooking several onions, sliced and diced, and garlic in my lard in order to get it nice and soft and delicious and fragrant and flavorful. It smells so good in here right now. I deglaze the pan with a little bit of wine, add in some rosemary and thyme. Fresh herbs just make everything so good. I love something like this where it feels fancy, it feels special, but takes less effort than things that in a lot of ways are a lot more time consuming. Like just let's say for an example, homemade mac and cheese. People might think, oh, that's an easy dinner. And it is an easy dinner. I'm not against it. But it looks very, you know, kid-friendly, very easy, fast. But in a lot of ways, this is so much faster as far as hands-on time goes. It does take some slow cooking in the oven. But as far as what it actually requires of me is less. But it feels so much more substantial and special. I add in some broth and some apple cider. So this is an apple cider braised pulled pork, if you will. Bake that for a couple of hours and then add in some onions and then put it back in the oven and bake it for another 30 minutes to an hour. Now that's that's a one pot dish, but I do wanna serve this with potatoes and potatoes are always better, in my opinion, when cooked on their own. Now, whether that is baked and then maybe a twice bake or fried or pan fried. To me, they're just better when done on their own. So I am just gonna cook them here until they are nice and crispy in my cast iron skillet. Serve that alongside the apple cider pork. This is a really delicious crowd pleasing dinner. Also with the apple cider and drippings mixture that is left behind after baking the pork. I'm just gonna thicken that up a bit with some flour and thyme, not the herb, but the passage of thyme. So I'm putting this on a very low and slow simmer with the lid off, adding a little flour in, and then just letting it reduce down to create more of a sauce that is a bit thicker. So not quite coating the back of the spoon, but whenever you dip your pork in it, it's not just running right off. We are just charging right through this week and in keeping with the theme of low hands-on time for me, <laughs> easy meals, I'm gonna make sort of a taco skillet. So I'm getting some rice, some salsa, black beans. I believe I have some canned tomatoes in here and then I also have some freeze-dried peppers from our garden over the summer. I have some moose meat, ground moose meat, ground beef, and some corn. I can't help but laugh because we have a joke in my family. My dad accidentally said moose moot with moose meat. And so now I just can't say moose meat without thinking about us all laughing and my dad saying moose moot. So we're going to be having moose moot skillet tonight. I also do get another couple pounds of ground beef out of the refrigerator because Two pounds isn't quite enough for us. Now, when I make four pounds, that will be too much, but we are not against leftovers here in this family. As usual, 
every single meal starts with fresh garlic and onion. I just use garlic and onion for every single meal because it's flavorful, it's easy, it gives you know fresh vegetable component to everything. It's an easy way to elevate something. Yes, you can use garlic powder and onion powder. I do that whenever I'm in a really big hurry, but most of the time we are cutting up an onion, mincing some garlic. I also frequently fall back on the trio of spices that I've used several times in this video, chili powder, cumin, and paprika. Really good for Mexican and really honestly in so many different ways. Also adding in some of those peppers, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salsa. I had two jars already open in the fridge I figured out, and so I wanted to use those up because unless you have fermented your salsa, jarred salsa, I'm sure you have all figured this out, just doesn't last all that long before it starts going off. So I wanted to make sure that I used that up, and this is a really good way to do that. I also cooked some rice separately. I'm adding that in and some black beans and some corn. A little bit more salt. I like to continuously throughout the cooking process, just taste it, make sure there's enough salt. I'm topping this, these with shredded cheddar cheese. And then the one that is in the stovetop pan, I'm just putting the lid on and turning the heat on until it's melted and then putting the cast iron one in the oven. So this did yield for us two full skillets. I'm topping it with Greek yogurt and well, of course, cilantro is good. Oh, I have some sauerkraut, whatever I have on hand, jalapenos, all good additions to this, and bonus points for leftovers. So for this meal here, I start with some baked potatoes. So early in the afternoon, before I was even close to ready to make dinner, I just put some potatoes in the oven. Now that is a good base for baked potato bar or just for baked potatoes as a side dish to whatever meat I make. It also works great in a simple gnocchi. So no matter what, I can start things like either start some meat in the Instant Pot or start some potatoes in the oven if I'm not sure what we're gonna make and work with that when the evening rolls around. Today, I am doing my same old veggies. This time I'm adding a little bit of celery, getting a little bit more fancy, but I've got onions, garlic, carrots, celery, some fresh herbs. I'm gonna make a soup again, but this time I'm going to add some gnocchi to it. It is amazing just how easy something like that is to add. And I love to have some kind of carb. It's a good way to stretch and fill a meal, especially with a large family. So I usually serve my soups with meat, vegetables, and then some kind of potato, bread, roll, rice. Uh, typically that's the formula that I follow. I also like to use bacon a lot because I can utilize the fat from it and then it also makes a good topping for almost any soup. So today I diced some bacon, cooked it, and then I'm using the grease to cook up my vegetables and also to saute the chicken. So I am doing all my vegetables in my soup pot and then the chicken in a separate skillet. Now the reason I'm doing it separate is just because whenever stuff is really stuck onto a skillet or a Dutch oven. If you try to braise a meat, it'll stick to the pan really badly. So I like to use a clean pan, some fresh grease and oil. That's why I just poured that oil into that separate pan. Now be very, very cautious that you don't get any grease into an open flame. That of course will be disastrous. I want to point that out because I'm always cooking with gas and I have bacon grease. And this is something that I know just from lots of years of experience. But if you don't, just know that if you put grease on a fire, that is not a good thing. I am setting my chicken breasts aside. I'm gonna cut them in a bit. Now they are not completely done all the way through. I just wanted to give some color to the outside to give them a bit more flavor, but they will cook more in the broth in the soup. So they're just partially cooked at this point. I mashed up my potato. I'm adding a cup of einkorn flour, an egg, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and some Greek yogurt. Now I have this gnocchi recipe. It's an einkorn gnocchi recipe over on the website, farmhouseonboon.com. So you can go over there, get the exact measurements, print out the recipe, and it does call for ricotta cheese. I just didn't have any ricotta cheese. So I am instead just using some yogurt works beautifully. I love that in the kitchen, you know, you can just think about what is a similar thing to this and usually it will work. 
Now the chicken left behind some very delicious and beautiful uh, drippings and little bits that were stuck on. So I just deglazed that with a bit of wine and scooped that flavor into my soup. I didn't want to leave it behind on the pan. I had some broth going in the Instant Pot from the bones I cooked chicken with previously in this week. Strain that straight into my pot. And now I am rolling out my gnocchi. So I combined all of the potatoes, the flour, the cheese, yogurt, egg, salt, and kneaded it with my hands, divided it in four, I'm rolling it out, and then just cutting it into pieces. Now this acts as sort of a pasta, sort of a dumpling, but it is really good. I also add a couple cups of half and half to my soup. I'm adding in the gnocchi at the end and just letting that simmer until it's done, which is a very short time, like 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna serve this soup with a bit of bacon that I reserved, some fresh herbs. I'm gonna do thyme and rosemary. This is a comforting and delicious meal for the last of these chilly winter days. Well, I hope that you enjoyed seeing what our family eats in a week, and I hope that I've inspired you to create something delicious and simple in your own kitchen.